Earl Leechburg, Vandergriff. Vamos a grabar. Hola y Hola. bienvenidos y bienvenidas. ¿Cómo están todos? ¿Qué tal? Bien. Bien, bien. para el lunes, sí. Bien. Para el lunes, bien. Ok, magnífico. Oh, tenemos un, un ratoncito. We've got a little <laughs> mousy here. Hola, uy, buenos días, buenos días. Uh, muy bien. Uh, we will be doing some practice with these little uh, oddball things we call pronouns, which can get a little bit confusing, but hopefully a little more focus on direct object pronouns and, you know, a little bit of that loque. We'll take any questions you had from our listening video as well. So, uh, un poquito de todo hoy, a little bit of everything today. And a uh, quick reminder for those who are watching uh, later on today is first day for registration for winter. So if you want any classes at all for from Scottsdale for winter, um, today is a day to start registration for that. And I think their catalog of classes is online. Did anyone ever find out if they've got a paper catalog up and running? At, nobody knows. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, that's something I actually mean to email them about to see if they're discontinuing the actual paper ones or not. Mm. Okay. A lot of us kind of lament the passing of actual paper okay. booklets. <laughs> Sometimes mm -hmm. it's easier to paste through. This, uh, this, is, this is one of those that I would support going electronic because, you know, if it, it's... It, mm. I recall they, they were probably 50 or 75 pages and yeah I'm just thinking most of us who even would look at it are looking for like a class or two in there that yeah and you know Scottsdale is generally pretty e-conscious yeah conscious. and mm -hmm. and it's expensive to print it's expensive to print in color it's expensive to ship mm -hmm. all that stuff so yeah I, I get it I totally get it okay magnifico Vamos a empezar aquí. Uh, vamos a ver si ustedes tienen preguntas. We're going to see if you guys have any questions on this. I want to show you the first, the informational video. This was our video on direct object pronouns and, uh, you know, basically how we use them. So this was a grammar oriented video. I just want to stop here first and see if you have any questions about that anything that didn't make sense or you need me to check out si o no no nada mm -hmm. bien magnifico okay vale we'll get rid of that little tab then um and uh i'm just going to show this as a uh, we're going to step through this uh como un punto de referencia, as a reference point. Here are the little words on the bottom tier of this chart. Whoa, that we'll be talking about momentito. I need to pause that because this is a good chart. It's a long video. I'm not going to show this video during class. But just to kind of contrast uh how these things sub in in a different reference point personal pronouns tell you who does the action in a sentence right so yo tu usted el ella nosotros ustedes ellos ellas vosotros if you're in spain but uh uh we on this side of the pond don't use that vosotros but they do prolifically use that on the other side of the pond so the top part of that chart tells you, they are pronouns that tell somebody who does the action, but the pronouns of people or things that receive action are on the bottom part of that chart. So the one that would, would correspond to yo would be me, right? Corresponding to mm -hmm. tu is te. Corresponding to lo or la is either usted or él or ella, uh, nos for nosotros, and Los or las can substitute for ustedes or ellos or ellas. So these uh, 
uh, direct object pronouns receive action and they stand in for something. Generally, these little pronouns, mete, uh, lo, la, nos, los, las, we have to mention the thing first, usually, right? They stand in for something. And we use those little direct object pronouns so that you don't have to keep repeating a noun over and over and over. Okay, uh, we use them to avoid repetition and we use them in English without ever even thinking about it at all. We just don't think about it. But um, it's something we have to think a little harder about in Spanish until it becomes mm -hmm. natural. Okay, um, mm -hmm. and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the lo one as well because it gets some kind of special uses but we're going to play around with these direct object pronouns so they're like the stand-in you know in the old uh, uh the movies about making movies about old hollywood where uh they'd have a fight scene in the movie and the director would yell cut and instead of having john wayne or uh i don't know keanu reeves or somebody take the actual boom hit you know, or receiving that, they say cut and they bring the stand in. Well, the pronouns are like those stand ins. Yeah. Uh, they receive the action. So, okay. Um, aquí vamos. Here we go. And I'll send this whole uh, screen. So, they're there to avoid repetition. Uh, generally, except for metenos, because those are obvious, um, generally these are going to be used after you've mentioned that object or person first, right? It's the classic thing of your, your husband walks into the door and you can't just say to him, do you have it? If you haven't, he doesn't know what it means. Does it mean you have the dog? Do you have the car? Do you have the keys? You have it. Yeah. You got to mention what that thing is before you just say it. Um, bien. Okay. Uh, vale. Um, direct object pronouns. And here's the thing that sometimes gets us messed up. And we'll probably talk about why we get messed up with that a little bit later, not today. But direct object pronouns, uh, they do not do the action, they receive the action. And direct object pronouns can be people or things. Either way, that's where we get messed up. In Spanish, there's a different kind of object pronoun called an indirect, not a direct, but an indirect. Indirect object pronouns tend to be only people. Few exceptions, never, nothing's ever 100%, but most of the time, vast majority of the time, they are people, indirects. But these directs, they might be human beings, they might be objects. So it's going to serve two purposes. So if we've got a sentence like, veo a Leonor y a Martín, um, if I take those names out of the sentence, and I want to talk about a Leonor y a Martín later on, I use los to say them, okay? In this case, the them is a people reference, right? Mm -hmm. Los veo, I see them. Uh, veo tu carro, uh, tu nuevo carro. Veo tu carro, uh, nuevo carro. I see your new car. Lo veo, I see it. Okay, so um, there is a lot of redundancy built in with indirect object pronouns. And by redundancy, I mean repetition. Direct objects do not have redundancy most of the time, uh, but indirects do. So we don't, uh, redundancy means we repeat something. So if, I'm going to give you an example. With indirect object prono uh, pronouns, which are going to be those troublesome words, le and les, you might get redundancy, meaning we use both the pronoun <coughs> and the name of the person, 
Okay. And that means redundancy because you're kind of double dipping. You're referring to the person twice. Le digo a Roberto. Les digo a mis hijos. The a Roberto or a mis hijos is redundant. If I've got a le or a les, I know I'm talking about to somebody. So those indirects often have redundancy, a uh, double dipping, a uh, mentioning the person twice. Okay. But we will not do that when it's the direct object pronouns. Lo, la, los, las. We don't have an ah with a person's name phrase. So that redundancy, redundancy thing, we have to take that out. So here are the pronouns we're going to be using. Uh, bien. And the lo, la, los, las, again, uh, the metenos are always going to be human beings, but the lo, la, los, las could be things or human beings either way. Okay. Uh, and in order to use these, we need to have some sort of context, knowing what the item is first. Okay. Necesito los archivos. I need the files. Ah, aquí los tienes. Here you go. <laughs> if you hand those archivos to somebody, you're not going to repeat, ah, aquí los archivos. Here are the files. You're going to have the shorter word that stands in. It's the stand in <laughs> for archivos. So we get rid of the word archivos entirely. Aquí los tienes. Here you have them. Here they are. Okay. Uh, Vas a llamar a tu novia. Ah, no, la llamo más tarde. No, I'll call her later. Right? La, here is the stand in. The director yells, cut, hold, bring the stand in in. <laughs> yeah. And la is standing in for that whole little phrase of tu novia. Okay, so these little words have a job to make our sentences shorter when we already know that we're talking about tu novia. And I just don't want to repeat tu novia, tu novia, tu novia all the time. Or I don't want to repeat los archivos, los archivos all the time. These pronouns are stand-in words, okay? And most of the time they're going to go in front of the verb, but we're going to start to take a look today or notice when they don't, okay? Uh, direct object pronouns, they usually come before the verb. And this is the part that's tough for English speakers because in English, we do the opposite. I see it, I see them. In Spanish, you need to train yourself to literally think, this is how I did it for myself when I was a kid. Them I see, it I see. That's the word order, okay? Uh, that's how a person who speaks Spanish as a native, they're thinking in that word order literally as they speak, all right? So this is something that for English, we need to train ourselves to do. Tienes el dinero, si lo tengo, it I have. Lo is standing in for el dinero, right? But it has, to, we can't say si, Tengo lo. It's got to be lo tengo. Mm -hmm. So in a plain old sentence, and I want to call a vanilla kind of sentence, uh, a plain old, plain old statement of fact, it'll be lo tengo, lo veo, los veo, la llamo, las llamo. It'll be like that. All right. Now, there are things to know about this word order bit that can get a little confusing because in a statement of fact sentence, a plain old sentence ta uh, talking about what is happening, that pronoun in front of the verb, that's going to be what happens. But there are times when that little word, lo, la, los, or las, might shift around and go different places. So we're going to take a quick look at when it might go into other places, not in front of the verb, but other places. Okay. Sometimes in Spanish, you can choose. Uh, oh, I'm going to highlight this first. 
here with this sentence, si lo tengo, you don't get to choose. <laughs> it's got to be lo tengo. It's got to be in that order. Tengo lo will sound weird to a native speaker. Will they understand you if you make that mistake? I have it. Tengo lo. Will they understand you? Mm, yeah, they'll probably, but it'll sound weird to them and they're going to be shaking their head a little bit thinking, what is this person saying? Okay. It makes it harder for you to make yourself understood. So it's got to be that order. You don't get a choice, choice with lo tengo. But in this kind of situation, you do get a choice. Okay. So that you can anticipate that you might hear somebody speaking using lo, la, los, las, and actually taking them on to the end of a verb-like structure instead of putting it in front. So these two situations, if we're two, using two verbs together, like I'm going to take it, or I can do it, okay? Can, do, going, to do, using two verbs together to talk about one situation, in that that kind of context, that little word, those little words, lo, la, los, las, might be, have two possible correct positions. Okay, so we're going to look at the two verb kind of phrase first. Okay, uh, I'm going to call him. I'm going to call him. Not I'm calling him. One verb, but two. I'm going to call him. Two verbs. You can put it where you learned it's correct in front of the conjugated verb. Lo voy a llamar. Lo voy a llamar. Like you would expect, like you learned in front of the conjugated verb. But you might also hear people tagging it on to the end of the second verb, meaning when you have an infinitive. Okay, that second verb, which is the infinitive, you can tag the lo onto the end of that. And it's also correct. So, lo voy a llamar or voy a llamarlo. Verb followed by infinitive. Okay, you do have a choice. The question always becomes, oh, Marilyn, which one is, what is more common? What do people do more? And there's no answer to that question. <laughs> people will do both. Uh, I tend to hear people using lo voy a llamar more, but you know what? People can do both and they do both. So there's no really answer to which one is more common. It really depends on what the speaker wants to do. So here's another situation where you do get a choice. Again, it's a two verb situation, but instead of verb plus infinitive, it's the estar plus a gerund. And a gerund is just a fancy word for an ing kind of verb. <laughs> so I can attach the lo, la, los, las to an infinitive, and I can attach the lo, la, los, las words to an ando, yendo kind of uh, uh, verb structure. So again, we're still using two verbs together, but just a different way. Estar plus an ando, yendo, the gerund. Lo estoy llamando, I am calling him, meaning I'm doing it right now, or estoy llamándolo. Both are correct, both are equally correct doesn't matter which. So you get a choice in that kind of situation. And you may hear people using the pronouns that way. With los tengo, I don't have a choice. With these two kinds of structures, you do have a choice. Okay. Now there's another one, because uh, I need to mention it, because you're going to hear it. People use these little words, lo, la, los, las, with commands. Commands means it's not a statement of fact. Okay. It's not, I have it, like a cup of coffee. La tengo. La taza. La taza, the cup. La. La tengo. I have it. La tengo en la mano. I have it in my hand. That's a statement of fact. 
a command is this. Ah, tomala, take it. A command tells somebody do something, meaning I want you to grab this part. Go ahead, take it. All right. And that's a command. It means you're giving an order. You want somebody to do something. Okay. So if we've got uh, an affirmative command, meaning a yes, go do it kind of command, then we do attach lo, la, los, las. We attach it to the end. And I don't get a choice. Affirmative commands, that's how it works. So call him becomes llamalo. Yama being used as a command, meaning call, pick up that phone and dial it. Yamalo. Yaman. Okay. So, para que sepan, so you guys know, those little words of lo, la, los, las might shift around into different positions. We work so darn hard to get this word order right. Lo tengo. And then it goes and it shimmies around in these situations here. So just be aware, pronouns might pop up in different places. Okay, vale. And here's the last thing I want to bring up, how we use it, because this is kind of a, Oh, it's difficult to think because of what we're thinking of as the word it in English. Um, it, in English, we can use it as an object. El baño está muy sucio, lo limpio hoy. The bathroom is dirty, I'm cleaning it today. But this word it in English winds up being a little bit tricky because uh, this is why we can't translate word for word for word all the time in Spanish. It in English is sometimes used in different ways where in Spanish it will not happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it is not used at all. You will not translate the word it. If it is uh, uh, functioning as a subject of a sentence. So, okay, remember, lo limpio hoy, I'm cleaning it, means it is receiving the action of being cleaned. Yeah. But sometimes in English, you can't translate the word it into Spanish. All right. Uh, like, hace calor, it's hot. It's hot. It is not receiving action. It is referring just to the weather. Yeah. So sometimes, yeah, it isn't always lo, la, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. When we say it's hot in English, that word it isn't going to translate at all. So sometimes we can't translate it moving from English into Spanish. Yeah. Uh, Spanish does a special thing with that, like hace calor. Sí, Lori. Um, so if you were saying like la mesa está muy sucio, then it would be la limpio. La limpio, sí, la mesa está muy sucia. Wow, this table is dirty. Yeah. So the it, 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 it has to match the gender it matches of whatever, whatever you're referring to. Exacto. If you're talking about la mesa... Uh, la limpio, I'm cleaning it. Yeah, then it won't be a law because you're talking about mesa. Yeah. Now, you know what? That is kind of hard for us to do in English because it is not gender driven in English. The word it in English is not gender driven, but gender driven in Spanish. So yeah, see. Si. Yeah, these examples up here where we are using el, la, los, las as an object receiving the option, action, you have to know the thing you're talking about. Okay. Um, so, si, la mesa, substituted for el baño, you're going to have a la in there. Si, bien. Um, okay. Vale. But sometimes it doesn't get translated or 
hace calor, it's hot. They don't use the word it in Spanish. So yeah, cuidado, careful, think about that. Also, some a, a situation like this, it's hard. It is not receiving action. I'm cleaning it. I am dusting it. I am chopping it. It receives action. In a in a sentence like it's hard, yeah, it's just es difícil. And the word it, you don't need an it in Spanish. Mm. They don't use an it ever for something like that. It's hard. Es difícil. Es difícil is what they consider an impersonal phrase. It's hard just talks about a situation, not an actual physical object. So they don't even use a word it in Spanish. Sometimes, yeah, where in English, we do need that word. We would never say, is hard to fix car. Yeah, you sound like a foreigner, right? Is hard to fix car. Do you understand somebody? Yes, you understand them, but we don't. We don't say it like that. So your brain starts to do things of, oh, <laughs> oh, foreigner. Yeah, he's hard to fix car. Yeah, okay. Uh, es difícil arreglar el auto. Okay. Uh, or another situation like this. El pastel está rico. The pastry. Ooh, el pastel está rico. It tastes delicious. This idea of it, the word it won't translate, right? It's just it's just the verb in that in that situation. So, uh, you know, be careful of the word it. A lot of times we need to use the word it in Spanish, but you may not use that it idea in in uh, uh, Spanish, even though you use it in English. So these are some examples of when we don't actually use the it word. Okay. Uh, es difícil. Es difícil. It's hard. Está lloviendo. It's raining. See? Uh, va bien. Ah, it's, going, it's going great. It's going well. Yeah. Just things are working along well, right? And remember, with gustar, you're, uh, well, I probably shouldn't say never. I'm going to change this to don't. There are always exceptions. Once in a while, you hear an exception to this rule. But here is one of the big violators. In English, we say, I like it. Yeah. Uh, you're not going to need a word it at all with the idea of like. Okay, so cuidado, careful. Uh, we're talking about situations where it doesn't appear at all in Spanish. And one of the ideas of it doesn't appear at all is that verb gustar. Be and the reason is that gustar technically does not mean like, right? It means to be pleasing. But in English, you're thinking, <laughs> if you're thinking in English, yeah, uh, uh, we tend to think I like it. And we will never use a lo or a la to say it with that verb gustar. So uh, um, I like it is just going to use gustar. Uh, Te gusta esquiar? Si sí, me gusta. Do you like to ski? Yeah, I like it. The it isn't going to be translated. It'll just be me gusta. Te gusta el carro? Te gusta el carro? Si sí, me gusta. Do you like the car? Oh, yeah, I like it. But the word it won't get translated. It's just me gusta. So, you know, these are little uh, tidbits. Sometimes the word it, we won't even translate it in Spanish. Sometimes, sometimes. Okay. Um, vale, bien. Okay, let's see if we can plug in ideas here. Voy a engrandecer esto. I'm going to plug this in. Lots and lots of, mucha práctica aquí. ¿Cuántas veces a la semana ves a tu mejor amigo? ¿Cuántas veces a la semana? How many times a week? ¿Cuántas veces a la semana 
ves a tu mejor amigo. If I say I see him or her once, and here's where it's driven by gender. If your friend is a guy, I need lo, right? Ah, lo veo, I see him, lo veo una vez cada semana. Lo veo una vez cada semana. I see him once a week. See? If your friend is a gal, it'll become... La. la veo. La veo una vez. La, la veo dos veces. La veo tres veces. La veo cada día. I see her every day. Okay? Vale. And the way to get yourself used to that plain old vanilla sentence, a statement of fact, is her I see. Okay, the way I taught myself was I changed my way of thinking. I changed my thinking order to her I see. La veo. It I see. La veo. <laughs> Same thing. Okay. ¿Entiendes la informática? Do you understand computing? Entiendo. ¿Cómo se dice? I don't understand it. No la entiendo. No la entiendo. No la entiendo. I don't understand computing. Programming. Coding, yeah? Coding, that thing. Informática. No la entiendo. No la entiendo. So we're seeing uh, when these words here get plugged in. ¿Ves muchas telenovelas? Do you see soap operas? Do you watch soap operas? No las veo. No, no las veo. No. Uh, sí las veo. Sí las veo mucho. No, no las veo. No las veo. Them I don't see. No las veo. Ok. Ah, ¿me entiendes? Do you understand me? ¿Me entiendes? No, no te entiendes. No te entiendo. No te entiendo. Ah, lo siento. No te entiendo. Sorry, I don't understand you. No te entiendo. Sí te entiendo. Bien. Vale. Yeah. Ok. ¿Cuándo nos vas a llamar? Ah. Pick that up. ¿Cuándo? ¿Cuándo ah, nos vas a llamar? Esto sí es difícil. This one's a little bit harder, right? Now we're talking about people. Bien. Uh, we're talking about, oh, I'm getting some of my old answers out here. So we, we, okay. ¿Cuándo nos vas a llamar? When are you going to call us? Uh oh, I need a you, but it can't be a te. When are you going to call us means you're talking about more than one person receiving the call, right? Uh, I'll call you guys, right? ¿Cuándo nos vas a llamar? First of all, let's think about this. How do we answer this? I'll call you guys. Which one of these words up here from the menos de os, which one is going to substitute to answer that? ¿Cuándo nos vas los. a llamar? Los. It'll be los. In Spain, it could be os. In Spain, likely. But on this side of the Atlantic, it'll be los. Yeah? Because the only thing that can substitute for you guys is this. Unless it's an all-gal group, right? An all-gal group theoretically could be this, las. 
But if it's a mixed group, it'll be los to say you guys, if it's a mixed group, guys and women and men. Okay. Cuando nos vas a llamar? Ooh. So, how about voy a llamarlos a las siete? De la... Voy a llamarlos uh, a las siete. I'll call you at seven. Voy a yeah, llamarlos. Be... De la noche? Es de la noche, noche, sí, de la noche o de la mañana, 7 a.m., sí, a.m., a.m., de, de la mañana, a las 7 del, uh, sí. Bien, van a, voy a llamarlos. This is a two-verb mm -hmm. combo. So I can do two different things and be correct. Now I get a choice. Voy a llamarlos. Or the other alternative, which is also correct, would be. Putting it in front of the boy again. Los voy a. Sí, los voy a llamar. So both are correct there because I have a two verb combo. Okay, that's why. I can say it either way. The los can go here, or the los can be like you first learned, up in front of the one verb that's conjugated, right? Uh, and both of those are, are correct. Uh, vale, bueno, aquí, here. We don't have two verbs working together. We've just got one verb here in the next one. Ayudas a los nietos con la tarea. Do you help the grandkids with homework? Sí, los ayudo. Los ayudo. Sí, los ayudo. Bien. Mm -hmm. Sí, los ayudo. Yep, I help them. I help them. Them I help. Los ayudo. Okay. Uh, <coughs> bien. I don't totally understand um, why it's ayudo uh, instead of ayude. Ah, because... Uh, and yeah, this is another kind of a puzzling thing to the 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 big picture. Ayuda asks, uh, ayuda asks, are you helping? Yes. So when you answer, are you helping? Yes, you're helping. Mm. Are you helping? I'm helping. Oh, okay. Ah. Okay, so yes. that verb it becomes an ayuda. Okay, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Makes sense. Now, like, uh, es buena pregunta. That's a good question because let's think of that. Somebody says, "Ayudas a los nietos con la tarea." Are you helping the grandkids? What if I'm not helping, but my husband is doing that? Then it won't be an ayuda. Si, sí, los ayudo. Yes, I'm helping them, but maybe my hubby is doing it. So then it becomes something like this. Ah, no. Mi esposo los ayuda. Okay. Oh, no. My husband is helping them. That verb tells who's doing it. <laughs> yeah. The question, right. ayudas, are you helping? If I'm talking about me doing it, it has to become Ayudo in the answer. But if my response is, I'm not doing that. He's got that job. It That verb has to do the work of telling that mi esposo is the one doing that work, right? right. Uh, no, no, mi esposo la, los ayuda. My husband, yes, because the verb always tells who's doing the action. It's ayuda if esposo is doing it, right? It's ayuda okay. if I'm the one doing it, right? So right, people right. could respond different ways, yeah? Um, okay. In this response, I'm not using ayudo, but I am telling you who instead is doing that job of ayuda. Yeah? Esposo, yeah. Ah, sí, eso es. Uh, your your question is a very, very good question. Ah, ¿dónde pones los zapatos? Where do you put your shoes? 
¿En el armario o cerca de la puerta? Do you put them in the closet or near the door? ¿Dónde pones los zapatos? Los pongo en el armario. Los pongo, los pongo. Los pongo, and then you name the place, right? Mm -hmm. Los pongo. I only get to put it mm -hmm. in front of the pongo because I've got this many verbs. Yeah, <laughs> I only get that choice in front of uh, pongo. Los pongo. Los pongo en el armario. Los pongo uh, cerca de la puerta. Los pongo cerca de la puerta. Bien. Okay. ¿Recuerdas los números de teléfono? Do you remember phone numbers? No los recuerdo. No los recuerdo. Hay en mi teléfono. Ay, ay, sí. No los re recuerdo porque están, están en mi teléfono. Ya están. They're already there. Ya están It's en well. el teléfono. No los recuerdo. Cuando, cuando era niña, sí, los recordaba. When I was a, uh, a kid, I remembered them. Sí, uh, sabíamos de memoria. We had to memorize those. Ahora... Ahora, hoy en día, nowadays, hoy en día, no los recuerdo. Uh, ¿Tienes el correo? You, have, you got the mail? No lo tengo. Ah, ¿Lo tengo o no lo tengo? Sí, depende. Uh, Okay. Okay, we'll just put these in so people can see the word order here. Uh, lo tengo. Lo tengo aquí. You know, here would be a typical response. I've got it. I've got it right here. Uh, lo tengo aquí. Mm -hmm. Oh, por ejemplo, por ejemplo, uh, no lo tengo. I don't have it. See? Uh, Tomas café cada día. Tomas café cada día. Lo tomo, lo tomo cada día, lo tomo muchos días, pero no todos. No lo tomo. I don't drink it. No lo tomo. Nunca lo tomo. Nunca lo tomo. Ah. Tomo té. I drink tea. If you're a tea drinker instead of a coffee drinker. ¿Sí? Nunca lo tomo. Tomo té. Okay. Bien. Vale. So, you've got the idea. Uh, we use these little it words often when we respond to questions often. All right. So we use these little words to respond to questions. We use these little words when a conversation is continuing and we don't want to keep uh, responding uh, or uh, using the same noun over and over and over and over again. Bien? Okay. Vale. Uh, let's see. If we can plug some of these in. Sometimes it may not, uh, sometimes it or them or they, well, no, them. Uh, sometimes they won't be used in a question answer, but just as a conversation is shared and carried along. Ah, tú compras los refrescos. Ah, ah, you buy them. And the underlined word is the one receiving the action of comprar, right? So what would we substitute here for no. los refrescos? No. Los. 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 Tú los compras. 
you, them, you buy. Yeah. And probably you wouldn't use the word tú. That's their kind of as a prompt. Tú y yo comemos las langostas. Uh, las langostas are uh, uh, lobsters. Hmm. Las... Tú y yo. Las comemos. Las comemos. Hmm. We eat them. Them we eat. Las comemos. Las comemos. Okay. Marilyn, sí. I have a question. Sí, because sí. To, I think if I'm like listening to someone, I would have a hard time figuring out when it's the versus <sighs> it versus an, a direct object. Ah. That, it, I mean, when I read it, it's okay. fine. But it, I think it would be hard for me to figure out just okay. listening quickly. Uh, that's why when you get the listening comprehension videos, you have to really isolate those and sometimes replay a segment more than okay. once um uh well okay you don't have that problem with lo because el and lo yeah are two different right. things yeah but that word la yeah that can happen or los right uh or less um just practice it's practice. <laughs> it's repetition. It's hearing many yes. examples. Uh, yeah, in reading, our, most of us are visual learners, a pretty high percentage of the population. Mm -hmm. So when we read it, we have time for our brain to process that. But when you're listening, you're right. You're flying by the seat of your pants when you're listening. You are flying not flying blind, but you're flying by the seat of your pants and, and you've got to think on the fly. You got to think fast and you just need to get used to that. Uh, uh, it's just exposure, you know, the quantity of exposure. So we're looking at examples here. Uh, uh, okay. A ver. Uh, ellos miran el menú. They're looking at the menu. Oh, they're looking at it. Ellos. No. Uh, lo miran, lo miran, and lo because it's, yeah, for el menú. Uh, yo invito a mis amigos, and here it is, the object is not a thing, it is a human being. It's a mis amigos. Yo invito a mis amigos, I'm inviting them because becomes them I'm inviting. Yo? No. Los invito. Mm -hmm. And remember, these are drills, so they're including the tu, the tu y yo, the yo, but you will usually won't hear those subject pronouns. Okay. They're they're here just so that you know what the word order is if somebody actually uses the both the subject and the object pronouns. Uh Roberto, uh, sí, bien. Just a quick question, because this is something I still struggle with. Mm -hmm. So whenever the direct object is a person or a pet, that's when you use the impersonal, that ah. Uh, ah, like, say this it, amis it, amigos it, bit? Yeah. So, okay. But if it was like mis amigos invitan, then you wouldn't use the ah. Uh. Oh, them, right. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. See, 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 see. Okay. So this goes again to... Who's doing the action? Yo invito a mis amigos. I'm inviting my friends. That ah, uh, that little ah uh word there doesn't really mean to, T-O. Right. It just has to be there because the direct object in that case is a group of human beings. Okay. And when human beings are objects receiving action, we need okay. that little word ah uh, there. It's just what they use. It has to be there. It does not translate. It just has to be there. But if I say my friends are inviting me, it becomes mis amigos. Now they're doing, not receiving, doing. Mis amigos me invitan. Mis amigos okay. me invitan. My friends are inviting me. Mis amigos me invitan. Okay. Yeah. That makes a lot more sense. Thank Invitan you. Invitan tells that mis amigos are doing it. Yeah. Uh, this is a, yeah, it, it's a thing that's tough for English speakers to get used to. And it, 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 we're, we're combining a lot of 
concepts and we're, we're throwing it out in that big ball of wax of subject does the action verb tells you what the action is. And, you know, some verbs do have objects. Some verbs don't have objects, but yeah, for the ones that have objects, we need these little words of the object pronouns. Roberto, here's another one with a human being. Aberta, we need an a. Ah. Uh, Roberto ve a Berta. Uh, Roberta, uh, Roberto sees Berta. Well, he sees a human being. Aberta, it must be Aberta because receiving the action of that, that verb be is a human being. Aberta. We need it there because she's a person. Roberto ve a Berta. But if we change it to Roberto sees her, it becomes Roberto la, la. la ve. How do you know that la, you hear somebody talking, Roberto la ve. You know that la doesn't mean the, la ve, her he sees. You know because it's right next door to a verb. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not Roberto B a la chica, a la chica, la is next to a noun. <laughs> it's Roberto la ve, la ve, her he sees. Or mm -hmm. it could be if he sees, but here it's her he sees because we have that prompt for Aberta. Mm -hmm. uh, esos señores quieren la cuenta. Oh, those gentlemen, they want the bill. They want it. Yeah. Ellos la quieren. Ellos la quieren. La quieren. Right? La doesn't mean the. La is standing in for the whole idea of la cuenta. Right? La quieren. Uh, José pide el jamón. Jose is ordering ham. Well, ham is not a human being. We don't have that word ah. <laughs> so uh, we need something to stand in for that word el jamón. Lo. Lo. El lo pide. He orders it. He's ordering it. El lo pide. Bien. Yo no reconozco a tu camarero. I don't recognize your waiter. I don't know which guy. There are a bunch of them running around the restaurant. Yeah. Uh, yo no conozco a tu camarero. I don't know your waiter. Uh, and a tu camarero is a human being. So we need the, that a. Uh. No. No lo conozco. No lo conozco. I don't know him. No lo conozco. Mm. No lo conozco. Bien. Uh, mm -hmm. Tú y yo esperamos nuestra cena. Nuestra cena means our dinner. It's a thing. It's not a human being. We don't have an A ah there. It's esperamos nuestra cena. We're waiting for our dinner. We're waiting for it. La. Tú y yo. La. La esperamos. La esperamos. It we're waiting for. It we're waiting for. La esperamos. La esperamos. Usted come un sandwich de jamón. And that whole block of un sandwich de jamón has to go bye-bye. See? Bien? We need a little short word to get rid of that whole segment that says un sandwich de jamón. No. Lo. Usted lo come. You're eating it. Usted lo come. It, you're eating. Lo come. See? Usted lo come. Bien? Bien? Uh, Ana cocina un pastel y unas galletas. Oh, we've got a couple of items. Mm -hmm. Ana los cocina. Los. los. Mm -hmm. ¿Por qué los? Why los? Ana los cocina. Nice. Them she's cooking. Well, you have two mm -hmm. things. Got two things. One of them is but galletas. One of them feminine. is masculine. So masculine. Women. It's that very machismo idea of when we've got a masculine item that takes precedence and it stands in for the whole 
whole ball of wax. Yeah. We throw one masculine thing in the group. The whole thing is referred to as a masculine uh, with a masculine word. In this case, los. Yo traigo mucha carne. Mucha carne. I'm bringing it. No. La traigo. La no. traigo. It I'm bringing. It I'm bringing. La traigo. La traigo. Even though it's yeah. mucha, you're still singular. It's still singular because carne is mm. singular. Sí. 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 Yeah. Sí, bien. Uh, yeah, 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 I know. Uh, mucha carne. Yeah, it's not carnes, uh, which technically could be carnes if you're talking about uh, um, uh, pollo y carne de res, yeah, types of meats. It could be theoretically, but it's just la, la traigo, la traigo. Carne. Uh, ustedes invitan a Lola y a Maga. A Lola y a Maga, they are human beings. That's why we need that little word a uh, there, okay? You guys are inviting them, those gals. Las. Las. Ustedes las invitan. You guys are inviting them. And here the them is a group of women uh, or two gals. So it's got to be las, okay? Ustedes las invitan. And English does not, them is not a gender-driven word. Them does not have gender in English, but it them has gender in Spanish. Okay. Y quien bebe jugo de toronja. Jugo de toronja. Uh, toronja is a, a grapefruit juice. <laughs> Jugo de toronja is grapefruit juice. And here's that de toronja. Oh, we can't say grapefruit juice, not noun next to noun. It's got to be jugo de toronja. So, uh oh, wait a minute. We've got toronja and jugo. No. ¿Quién lo bebe? No. ¿Quién lo bebe? ¿Quién lo bebe? Why is this lo? Because the thing we're actually talking about is Jugo, mm -hmm. juice. So that's what drives the gender we need for that pronoun, juice. De toronja, de toronja only tells me the type of juice it is. So uh, when we plug in the word it, uh, we're not looking at toronja, the description of the juice type. We're looking at jugo, the actual thing. See, ¿Sí? bien? Mm -hmm. Vale? Okay. Vale, bien. I'll send you the little link to that mm -hmm. so you can practice a little bit. You'll get some more practice. Uh, oop. Okay. Alguna pregunta? Any kind of question after finishing this up? Uh, and, and you're right. Uh, it is a little more complex than you think because, you know, we have all of these uh, factors of, of getting word order of conjugating the verbs right. Yeah. Uh, bien. Vale, vamos a practicar un poquito más. Now we're going to take some free expression things here. Ah, tenemos mucha comida. We got lots of food here. Mm. Hay mucha comida. We've got Hanukkah food. We've got Thanksgiving food. We've got all kinds of food. Hay mucha comida aquí. Bien. Ah, uh, and I'm going to translate kind of freely. If you're talking about latkes, <laughs> uh, well, mm, pues, okay. Uh, no sé. I'm going to say this is probably going to be a los kind of thing here. Kind of, It's kind of like panqueques kind of, sort of. Okay. Uh, bien. Uh, uh, my, my friend cooks these at Hanukkah time. My friend cooks them. 
¿Cómo se dice? My friend cooks them. Mi amigo cocina. Los cocino. Uh, los cocino, no, uh, cocina, ¿sí? Mm -hmm. Mis, mi amigo los cocina. Mi amigo los cocina. Mi amigo los cocina para Hanukkah. Bien, ok, vale. Bueno, uh, ¿sí? Uh, mi amigo los cocina. Mi amigo los prepara. Mi amigo... Los sirve. He serves them. Los sirve. Perfecto. ¿Ok? Vale. Yo como para Hanukkah. Los como para Hanukkah. Perfecto. Sí. Sí. Uh, um, ok. Vale. Uh, bueno. Now we've got many different examples. Aquí hay muchos ejemplos. ¿Sí? Uh, um, ok. Aquí tenemos pavo, pastel, uh, bollo, some buns. ¿Sí? Um, espárragos. Asparagus. Ah, ¿cómo se dice? Ah, espárragos. I don't eat them. Espárragos. No los como. No los como. ¿Cómo se dice? The kids don't eat them. The kids don't eat them. Los, los niños, niños no, no, no los, los niños no los comen. Why why is this? Why why do we use a, asparagus in plural in those sentences rather than like, you know, I don't eat it. Asparagus, asparagus, I'm, asparagus I is, is a food as opposed to like asparagus food. Sí, eso. Ok, vale. Buena pregunta. Ok. Es, mm, 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 mm. Okay. es cosa de, del uso. Um, a lot of times things are singular. No, carne. Es más común singular. Uh, la carne. Aquí, los espárragos, I never hear anybody use that singular. And I think it's just because, well, no sé por qué. I really don't know why. Los espárragos. Los espárragos. Another one that would be like this would be this word. Las espinacas. Spinach. Because <laughs> who eats one spinach leaf? I guess. But but one, I mean, I hear you saying it's just the way it is. But, you know, yeah. one eats it. Uh, one eat spinach. No, I can't no. see. I can't say you just have to know it from hearing it used. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, you know, singular kind of works, you know, el café, el té. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As a group. But usually those are used in the plural. Yeah. Okay. Las espinacas. Las uh, espinacas. Bien. Uh, that also kind of tends to go plural. Okay. Los espárragos. But if I'm talking about el pavo, el pavo, el pavo, uh, uh, if I want to say mom prepares it every year, mamá, and it is talking about el pavo, turkey. Lo, lo prepara. Lo prepara cada año. Sí, uh, mamá lo prepara cada año. Bien. Uh, uh, okay. uh, qui quién, ¿Quién lo cocina? ¿Quién lo cocina? Who's, who cooks it? Sí. Yeah, if we ask that as a question, it becomes... 
¿Quién lo cocina? Who's cooking it? Is dad cooking it? Is mom cooking it? Are the kids cooking it? ¿Quién lo cocina? ¿Quién lo cocina? Bien. Uh, ok. A ver. Uh, yeah, mama. Mama lo cocina. Mamá lo cocina. Mamá lo cocina. Mama Papá lo cocina. lo cocina. ¿Cómo se dice? The kids are fixing it. Uh, the children. Los hijos. Los, los niños uh, lo, lo cocina. Lo cocinan. Cocinan. And that verb oh, changes, yes. right? But the yeah. lo stays the same. Los hijos lo cocinan. La mamá no lo cocina. Los hijos lo cocinan. ¿Bien? Sí. sí. Bien, perfecto. Ok. Ah, bueno. A ver, ok. Otra idea. Another idea. Ah. Aquí tenemos a... Uh, una foto de una familia. Hay una familia que va de compras. La familia va de compras después del Día de Acción de Gracias, el Black Friday. La familia uh, hace las compras el Black Friday, ¿sí? Uh, um, bueno, aquí. Uh, tenemos una mamá, un papá y un niño. Uh, ¿Cómo se dice? Uh, ellos los compran. Los compran. Para Navidad. I would need to preface that with something first. Like regalos. Van de compras para, para comprar regalos de Navidad, por ejemplo. Okay. So I have to know that I'm talking about los regalos. Ahora, they have them in the basket. Okay. I need to know first that I'm talking about regalos because you could be looking at the trees, los árboles. You could be looking at the kid. You could be looking at a lot of different things. So, uh, van, van de compras uh, uh, para la Navidad, para regalos, para regalos de Navidad. Okay. They have them in the bath, in the cart. ¿Cómo se dice they have them in the cart? It is they compras, they are going to buy them. Van, is, van, is, de, com de, compras? van de compras simplemente es they're going shopping. Okay. Van de compras. They're going shopping. Van de compras para regalos de Navidad. They're going shopping for Christmas gifts. Nada más, nothing else. ¿Sí? Bien. Okay, como se dice, they have them. And now we know that the them is talking about this whole thing, which goes mm -hmm. away. That whole phrase goes away when we plug in the word them. Como se dice, they no, have them no, in the no. cart. Los tienen. Los tienen en, en el uh, carrito. Uh, en el carrito, ¿sí? Los tienen en el carrito. ¿Bien? Ok. Ah, ok. Otra idea, cambiando de idea. Changing our idea. Uh, en la tienda uh, hay... Decora hay muchas decoraciones. En la tienda hay muchas decoraciones. ¿Cómo se dice? They see them all over. They see them. 
we have to get rid of this whole block. Yeah. Muchas decoraciones. They see them. Las ven en muchos lugares. Las ven en muchos lugares. Sí. Ah, 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 uh, aquí, ah, en muchos lugares. Ah, las ven ah, ah, por todas partes. Por todas partes es como all over. <laughs> everywhere, everywhere. Sí, por todas partes. En muchos lugares. Bien. Vale. Sirve. That works. It would okay. be las, though, right? You oh, said las. las. Perdón. Sí, las. Oh. I said it. I didn't type it. Las ven. Las ven. Las is getting rid of this whole chunk of words. Muchas decoraciones. Las ven. Now, how do you know that las doesn't mean the when you hear it? Las ven is paired up with a verb. Las ven, them I see, them I see. Las ven, see? Mm -hmm. Las ven. Okay. Oh, por ejemplo. Aquí arriba, uh, en esta foto aquí, en esta foto aquí, tenemos un cartel, uh, tenemos un celular, we've got un cartel, a poster, tenemos una bolsa, a bag, sí, tenemos un celular, uh, sí, uh, hay, hay una bolsa azul en la foto, hay una bolsa azul. En la foto. ¿Cómo se dice? The woman has it. Hay una bolsa azul en la foto. ¿Cómo se dice? The woman has it. La mujer la tiene. La mujer la tiene. ¿Sí? La mujer la tiene en, en el brazo uh. derecho. La mujer, más información, more information. La mujer la tiene en el brazo derecho. ¿Bien? ¿Vale? Ah, la mujer la tiene en el brazo derecho. Ok. Vale. Bueno. Hay un celular en la foto. Hay un celular también. The man has it in his hand. A man. No sabemos quién. We don't know who. Un hombre. Un hombre. And the it is a celular. Lo. 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 Has it. Has it. Tiene okay. en el man, en lo la tiene mano. en la mano. Bien. Sí, perfecto. Vale, bien. Yeah. Ok. Yeah. And this is how we will hear these little things flipping in and out all the time. Ok. A ver. Uh, muy bien. Alguna pregunta, any kind of little question. And you're right, it's, it's an adjustment mm -hmm. hearing people speaking and using that. You even heard um, examples of these pronouns being thrown around in this video you had about design. You even had it pop up here and there, kind of all over the place, see? But of course we only use it when we need it. Um, quiero saber, I want to know, si hay una 
a uh, alguna pregunta a uh, del video. I want to shift gears a little bit here and I want to see if you have any questions. I want to make sure I leave time <laughs> to see if you have any questions about that video. And it was a video about design and things mm -hmm. that are, are designed well and things that are lousy designs and all of that. See? No question. I don't have a question, but I do like her videos. Yeah, you see. Uh, was there anything that was particularly like hard to follow or, or no? No. I had to slow it down, but you had to slow it down. Okay. Yeah. Está bien. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, I'm going to pull up the vocabulary set because I want to show you one more thing that's related to, uh, Lo, la, los, las, and it might be a little bit confusing, but it won't be if you think of it as a word chunk. Aquí viene, here it comes. Uh, there is one idea she used, y voy a engrandecer esto, I'm going to blow this up a little bit. She had a few little places where she threw in an, an idea like this. Lo que me refiero, lo que me refiero. Uh, lo que is a special kind of chunk. It is not the lo, the technical it thing, yeah? Mm -hmm. And how will you recognize this? You'll recognize this because it's a chunk. When when these two words go together, lo que, lo que, lo que, it will, the lo is not going to mean it anymore. Mm -hmm. The lo goes into a different idea. Lo que is what but it's what when we are not asking a question all right what are you doing is just the word k right cases what are you doing que tienes what do you have there que tienes en la mano what do you have in your hand see que hace tu esposo que hace tu esposa what's your better half doing see and there, what isn't a question. Que, que, que. Okay. But lo que is what when we're not asking a question. Lo que me refiero. What I mean. Yeah. Uh, and so be aware of that. Lo has yet another way it can be used. And actually there are a couple more ways, but when you hear lo que, those two words, always think of them as a unit. Okay, two things that go together. And it's talking about something abstract. It's not talking about a physical thing like a cup, or it's not talking about uh, una jarra de crema. It's not talking about a physical object. Lo que is referring to what when it's an abstract thing. Okay. Question. Sí. Um, so if you were saying a cup is what I drink from, I know it's an awkward sentence, but so you're referring to an, so you would use K without the accent. Yeah. Coffee is what I drink. Not what are you drinking? Que bebes. Right? Que bebes. No, no, no. Café es lo que quiero ahora. Coffee is what I want now. Así es, sí. Lo que is used to say what uh, when there is no question. <laughs> okay. Uh, in that kind of sense, see? So I did want to point out that that lo que is a special kind of word combination, yeah, that goes together. Yeah? Okay. Uh, otra pregunta. Any other question? Uh, I want to see if you picked up on one other little thing she used a lot in the listening video, uy, tengo que, hmm, tengo que buscar 
el lugar específico. Ok, un momentito. Got to go to the exact right por portion of Okay. Bueno. Make sure my subtitles are on. Okay. A ver. Ah, no va la elección de los colores del diseño de nada. No tiene nada que ver con el producto. No tiene nada que ver con el producto. And here we're segging back to a little use of tener, a special tener idiom. And this one, she repeated a bunch. No tiene nada que ver. No tiene nada que ver. It has nothing to see, except it doesn't mean it has nothing to see. No tiene nada que ver. It has nothing to do with. So, uh, If you want to kind of test your listening mm -hmm. skill uh, again, and uh, this, this one gets repeated a bunch of times. And again, it's a tener idiom. It's going back to that, uh, that idea of tener idioms. But no tiene nada que ver has nothing to do with the product. No tiene nada que ver con el producto. Bien. Uh, and she also talked about that a lot with the Amber Crombie and Fitch. No tiene nada que ver. Yeah, this 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 whole dark and hunting thing has nothing to do with it. It's a clothing store. Bien. So no tiene nada que ver means it has nothing to do with. And I wanted to point that out. So if you want to listen to that again uh, and listen for those little examples, Uh, that will be a helpful thing. Okay, bien? Mm -hmm. Pretty good with that, see? Mm -hmm. Todo bien? All good. Okay. Uh, alguna pregunta? Any question before I wrap that up? Nada, nada, nothing there. Okay. Um, Bien, your listening video, you're going to hear a uh, lo que. This is your kind of storytelling part for the coming week. So we're going to preview this a little bit. Uy, no hay sonido, momentito. A ver. Diez minutos. Yeah, even if you're busy with shopping, this is something that'll fit into your week pretty well. And you're going to hear a lot of lo que, lo que, lo que here. Bien. A Repeat. todos, ¿qué es lo más importante en la vida? Or lo que or lo. Yeah, a different way of using lo. It may be lo que. It might be lo with a description. ¿Qué es lo más importante de la vida? Hmm, ¿Qué quiere decir? What does that mean? ¿Qué es lo más importante en la vida? Here, you will hear lo que later on, but here, lo más importante. A little different use of the yeah. word lo. Lo here, uh, yeah is not just plain old it. What is it most important? No. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, ¿Qué es lo más importante? Lo más importante. Uh, here, lo is being used not really as a masculine word. Ooh, here's yet a different use of the word lo. I know, because it just isn't that easy, is it? Mm -hmm. uh, lo más importante de, en la vida, the most important thing. Here, lo means the thing with that describer. So I want you to listen to another video 
and you're going to hear lo más importante and maybe some lo que is thrown in here and there. I don't remember exactly. No recuerdo exactamente. Uh, uh, but lo más importante, the most important thing. Oh, and if I take off these here, you see it translated. What's the most important thing in life? And lo with a describer. Yeah, no, notice it's not lo in front of a verb. Más importante sure is not a verb. <laughs> más importante means more important. And here, lo más importante quiere decir the most important mm. thing. And what do we mean by that thing? It's something abstract. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you hear lo, a lot of times it means it, but here it won't mean it. It'll mean the most important thing in an abstract sort of sense. It might be a feeling, it might be an activity, but muy abstracto. It's not referring to an actual object. Okay, uh, so we're going to show you just a snippet. Creo que puede haber muchas respuestas diferentes y por eso quisimos venir aquí a preguntarle a la gente so, en México. This will give you, I think, without clicking the subtitles, you may need to click when the people do their responses. I, no, vamos, vamos a ver, a ver. qué nos dicen. Vamos. Ah, vamos a ver qué nos dicen. We're going to see what they're telling us, nos dicen, mm -hmm. what to us they're telling. Okay. ¿Qué es lo más importante en la vida? And here's how we ask, frame the question. What's the most important thing? ¿Qué es lo más importante en la vida? Lo más importante en la vida es tener amor propio. Ooh, tener amor propio, to have self, self-esteem is translated as amor propio, love for yourself. Oh, love for yourself is how they, amor propio is the way we translate self-esteem. Y preocuparte siempre por el prójimo. Okay, el prójimo just means uh, a different word of saying, uh, different way of saying vecino. Bien. Disfrutar la vida para viajar y todo eso. Sí. Okay, so you're going to hear people all talking about the most important things of life in your listening uh, comprehension video, which is kind of a nice thing, even though we're past Thanksgiving Day. What's the most important thing? Uh, lo más importante. Bien. Um, vale, and you're going to have two videos. Uh, the other one is not related to, uy, donde esta? Is again, not related to a specific grammar thing, but, uy. A ver, lo perdí. It is another guessing game. So they're going to both be, because I assume people are still going to be kind of busy. It'll be two, two videos, one talking about the most important things in life. The other one is going to be a, a, a guessing game kind of video. Uh, not hard, not abstract, uh, but very much, uh, it's a drawing guessing game. Con Andrea y Agustina. So uh, it'll be a not real big brain buster kind of video for listening comprehension, but always listen for how these little words are going to hang together. See, ¿Sí? bien, todo bien, bien. all good, bien. fantastico. Bien. Okay, um, and next week I think we're going to take a little look at uh, the idea of not. Lo, la, los, las, but that very, very troublesome word, le, and maybe les, and how they are different and why they are different. Okay, again, they're going to be pronouns. They're going to be receiving action. 
So it's still in that same vein, but these are going to be indirect instead of direct object pronouns, but you're going to hear them a lot. So we will take a look at those and what they are and how to listen for them uh, in context. Okay. Todo bien. Todo bien. Sí. Todo bien. Perfecto. Bueno, son las once. It's 11. Uh, uh, do email me if you have uh, a desire to do the luncheon kind of thing. We're trying to schedule it before all the holiday stuff gets too, too hectic. So uh, mm -hmm. I have uh, people to, um, we'll take whatever gets the, the most vote, a Tuesday or a Thursday uh, date. So do get back to me if you did not do that already. And some of you I know are busy and cannot, and that, that's okay too. So Todo bien. Ok. Nos vemos la semana que viene. Vale. ¿Sí? Sí. 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 Perfecto. Perfecto. Gracias. Muy bien. De nada, de nada. Es un placer.